No more grease. That's what we got. No more grease. So sick of the grease. So we're kind of in a holding pattern. This is where I got everything stored. I had to move it a ton of stuff around. Well, I'm just gonna be honest. I'm gonna try to scrape this uh, milling machine. And um, I'm not here to teach. The video is not gonna be a teaching session. So if you think I'm gonna teach you, you, you're sorely mistaken and it would be a really bad idea to follow what I do because I could screw this all up. It's just as simple as that. Here's our setup. Well, you can tell where I went to buy some of my my hardware uh, surface plate uh, 30 some inches by I don't know 18 and 19 inches somewhere in that range we got the <clears throat> column laid on its back we're gonna blue up the plate lift it up flip it over and we're gonna set it down on there to take a couple readings we got it blued up we're gonna lift it up you're going to see it's going to start to flip. It's going to start to roll. That's because all the weight is topside here of this plate. So it's going to start to roll. And that's why we have this bar here. Because this is the distance that's needed for it to flip around and not hit the chain. Otherwise, the chain is uh, at an A shape. And it hits the corner of the, of the plate. So that's why we have it like this. All right, here we go. All right, that wasn't, that wasn't bad. It's a piece of cake. I'm probably going to blue this two or three times to see if I get a consistent reading because just setting it down, I want to make sure that we, uh, that we do all of our inspection work thoroughly before we touch it with a scraper. All right, for the sake of learning, um, this is learning for me actually. Now I know why uh, you take when you initially scrape you a lot of what I've been reading what I've been reading what I've been reading uh, you take a couple passes with the scraper like two passes just to kind of even out everything if you will to knock off initial just just kind of get a uniform coverage to begin with because what we've got here are high spots like burrs essentially Here's a spot up here. That big mess is actually the numbers that were stamped into the top of that front way. And we'll take a look at that in just a second. But we have to realize that this is the reverse. So, for instance, um, we've got our numbers up here. And this mark here is going to be, if we're facing the, the ways, this is the right side and this is the left side. So it doesn't really make sense, even though that's the top. Uh, this is the right side. This is the left side. So it's just reverse. So clearly, um, we'll, we'll clean all this back up and we'll take a look. And you'll see the burrs that I'm going to go ahead and just kind of knock off just a little tiny, take a little file and just kind of clean those out. So up here, just out of camera sight here, we got those stamped numbers. They're clearly lifting the whole thing up. We'll do another bluing. Obviously, we've got all this coverage and in, in here, this is raised. 
so we're gonna I'm gonna just kind of take the, those numbers down a little bit I want to get a better better sense of what is going on Some stiction. Ah, okay. Oh, we got a lot different result this time, that's for sure. A major difference. Knock those burrs off. That's the lesson I learned tonight. Knock the burrs off. That's why I said you should not think that I'm teaching you. I am not teaching. I'm trying to learn, man. As you saw, it, it was really sticking and it pulled up, which was a good thing. That's a good thing. But um, it's got the wear in obviously the visually uh, due to the worn down scrape marks, the original scrape marks. We could see that without even bluing, but this just helps confirm that. Uh, you can see I, I did hit it with a little scraper. I just took off the numbers there and I hit those three big spots. Actually, there was a really, it was actually a chip. So I, I had to kind of work that thing down. And the next thing I, I'm guessing that I'm gonna do is clean this back off. And I'm gonna take an indicator I have a tense indicator and I want to see if I can actually measure this versus this versus this. I'm going to put the indicator base here and it'll extend out, touch the needle here and we'll see if we can notice that change. Just touching, I've zeroed out here, we're pretty much dead on maybe mm, a half of a Ten thousand. So we'll move our way up to this area here, which is not that great, and see what we got. One thing to note is if I apply pressure on the base, on the indicator, we do get a little bit of a movement on the back side. So that tells me uh, I'm going to keep the pressure on the front. We're starting to enter into that zone of uh, wear, and we've got about a tenth. That's two tenths. Excuse me, three tenths. I hope my head's not getting in the way. Three tenths. And let's get way down in the bad zone. Let's get way down in there. Let's find the deepest valley that we can come across. Sorry, that pushback was me. That looked like a thousandths, but that's not the case. Half a thou. Uh, once in a while it dips to just a little bit beyond that, but this region here of greatest wear seems to be holding true at a half a thou. Okay, these are the two wear spots. I don't have a lot of space to spin around here. I'm trying to stay on this island, essentially. Uh, when I get up here, we start to get that wear. So I'm trying to keep the base on the back side. So if you see me kind of wiggling it around to get it in position, I don't want to fall off the back here because there is more wear. So. All right, we're on in the two and uh, that's about six, six tenths.
uh, five, maybe half thou. And the re reduces, so it's like right in, oh, right there is a little spot. One little spot there, seven tenths. And uh, so we, we're about half a thou, I'd say. We'll go over here, and sure enough, it's the exact same. <clears throat> half a thou. And we pick back up and we're in, in good land over here. That's good stuff down in there. So it's just this little pad area. Basically the mill was used, uh, looks like in a single operation, the majority of its life. Two positions, well actually, yeah, two spots or one spot and it just lived there for a long, long time. Half a thou on are three areas these two areas here and up there at the top that we just looked at I'm not gonna sit here and spend the whole time showing you but I will show you how I set this up to measure it and this comes by a picture sent through uh, from Richard King he shared a picture of how he did this now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get measure the where using an indicator of the dovetails now i know a lot of the things that i've seen on the internet you put two pins and then you just measure that width across the problem is is we don't have a scraped surface here this is just rough casting here on the bottom so if you put a pin in here you're definitely going to get some incorrect readings and i've got this brown and sharp uh, base here and it has these two pins which You've got these two pins to kind of hold it along this back edge. I don't really trust that as a measurement because there could be wear along this edge. Ideally, I'd probably want to run it along the uh, actual dovetail. But just as an initial, before I actually build something to uh, correctly seat this, I just figured I would take a moment just to get a rough idea, you know. I've gone along here and I, I've taken some measurements and I've marked that out and I've basically created a map, I believe, of what potentially the the surface looks like for the dovetails. So just thought I would share with you how I've got this set up. I used a um, half thou indicator <clears throat> and I've created two maps. One is the right side and that would be the gib side, and one is the left side. And essentially, what we have here is a map. Uh, in this case, the highest point is actually here. So this, it drops off near the top side. So if we were staring at the column and it were standing up, this is basically what it looks like. Um, I know that might not make any sense to you whatsoever, but uh, it clearly drops off about, mm, I'd say, halfway, a uh, little less than halfway from the top. So it's a good surface here, and then it, it drops in on this side. Now, the right side is the gib side, and up near the head of the machine is where I started with my zero and it immediately just drops down and it pretty much uh, stays steady across this entire surface back here. So this is the gib side. That would be if you're facing the machine, it's the right side. And if you're facing the machine on the left is just a, a regular dovetail slide. The dovetail slide has that a, a wave. But again, I can't really trust that. At least I don't think I can trust that due to the fact that I'm measuring using the edge here. Uh, somebody correct me if, if that is, uh, my assumption is correct. I, I, am I correct in assuming that I can't really trust this edge because of possible wear and giving an inconsistent reading? So I just thought I would share with you that I'm continuing to do this investigative 
uh, aspect before I actually touch it. And I hope to create just a simple device that will allow me to place uh, two points here and two points along here, for instance, and be able to reach out with my indicator so I could get a better. Well, it's a work in progress, just like everything I do. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, you know the deal, thumbs up, all that bit. But what I'd really appreciate are those who know to provide me with that feedback. I'll, uh, you know, I'll click the, the little heart button or whatever it is and uh, bring those comments up to the top so that future viewers can kind of be informed by my mistakes. You know, wasn't it that Edison dude or whoever invented the light bulb? Uh, I think he had a couple mistakes before he actually got it right. So, you know, it's always good to see what not to do along with what to do. That's my always been my approach because if you see what not to do, then you know to avoid it. And maybe this video is all of that, like everything to avoid. And if so, awesome. Then I feel like I'm contributing in some way because what I'm doing is I'm learning and I'm sharing my mistakes. So, hey, thanks for watching. See ya. Update. I got the, um, I got the quill back. Nice. Nice. They got it on a Tuesday, had the job done. That Wednesday, they had it boxed back up and it was shipped back to me on Thursday. Super, super quality service. Very pleased with Wells Index.